In October 2004, a man named Corey Christensen had traveled to Mexico on a vacation. He decided to go golfing, as there were a number of courses near the resort where he was staying. Admittedly, he wasn't much of a golfer, and several of his balls ended up in the weeds. It was while retrieving one of these balls that he would come face to face with a creature he had trouble identifying. He described that it was a small, furry quadruped. At first I thought it was a raccoon, but then I noticed that it had an elongated face. It had the tail of a raccoon, the body of a lemur, and the head and face of a weasel. He was a little stunned but brushed it off and returned to his game. Later, while talking to some locals in town, he was told that he probably just encountered a raccoon, and the other details were just his imagination, though Christensen knew that this was not the case. Despite many hours of searching, he was not able to find a single animal that matched what he saw on that day. It kind of looked like God had left over pieces of furry animals, and slapped them all together and produced this creature. This summary by Christensen of what he saw, one animal which seemed to be an amalgam of multiple animals, is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. In Fortiana, you will occasionally come across cases involving creatures or animals that seem to be haphazardly put together pieces of other animals. These omnicryptids, or Frankencryptids, as Albert Rosales calls them. I have collected a large number of these types of cases from various sources, including defunct websites, books, and newsletters, and I will be presenting them here. As I've said before, keep an open mind because some of these are just weird. It was June or July 2001, Barnegat Light, New Jersey. Justin, no last name was provided, was out biking with his friend Alex. It was around 5 or 6 p.m. They rode down North Broadway Avenue by the Barnegat Lighthouse, then turned south to go back. Alex then spotted 8 to 10 stray cats. That area had a fairly large population of stray cats, Justin noted. They were laying on the road on 3rd Street. Alex biked toward them and Justin behind him watched as the cats scattered. After that, they turned their bikes and began heading back down the street. As soon as I finished the turn, something caught my attention from the corner of my eye. I casually glanced to my left. At first, I thought it was just a cat. I turned my head back forward, then I visualized it and realized it wasn't a cat. I stopped. I looked back in the direction of this animal, completing a double take. Right there, laying in the middle of the blacktop driveway, was this creature. For the next 25 to 30 seconds, Justin and this odd-looking animal stared at each other. It had cat-sized body proportions, two and a half to three feet from head to tail, but the tail was like a ferret's, big furry pipe cleaner. The head and face was more monkey, ape-like, humanoid-like. I'm pretty sure its face was hairless. Its fur was brownish. It didn't have hindquarters like a cat or a rabbit would have. It had humanoid-type legs. When I did a double-take and looked at it, it looked at me very nonchalantly. And then, after a few seconds, it noticed I was staring, and the expression on my face must have looked horrified. It noticed my shock. It looked at me like it knew it was doing something wrong. Its facial gestures made me think that it messed up by me seeing it. After we shared this awkward glance, it stood up and turned. I noticed its tail went down at a 45 degree angle, while it hopped into the bushes on the left side of the driveway. Justin could hear it as it rushed away into the backyard. He pedaled down the road and met up with his friend. No surprise, Alex doubted his story when told. Justin returned to the spot multiple times over the next few days, but never saw the creature again. I don't believe that this thing is an inbred cat or fox. It recognized my shock. I believe that this creature is intelligent. In the summer of 2001, a woman named Kara, no last name provided, was out with her cousin riding their horses, Boomer and Cider, on some back trails in the woods of Vermont. It was getting late and the blue sky was fading. They were up near a pond when they began hearing strange noises. 
Kara likened it to a rabbit scream, although it was like high-pitched yips. This sound seemed to spook their horses, which she found odd, since Boomer and Cider never got spooked by anything. Kara chalked it up to a bird, but as they made their way to the end of the pond, the sound continued to get louder. Then they spotted it. At the other side of the pond we saw a strange animal, Kara recalled. It was upright like a meerkat sits, except it was much more stocky. It had almost claws hands. It looked a little bit like a small monkey. It was a dull brown black in color, no very unique features or anything except for a small mustache. This was the only part on its body. I think it had been watching us for some time. Maybe this is why it made the call. As soon as it realized we were staring at it, it took off. This is the part that surprised us more than anything. It moved nothing like a monkey. It ran like a small dog. Curiously, in July 2002, Kara was out with her Rottweiler Annie checking the electric fences around her property, which had stopped working. Her dog became incensed, barking at something. That is when she spotted something dash from the tree line into the forest. I didn't get as good a sighting as the first one, but it was definitely the same or same type of animal. It had a noticeably smaller mustache. Could this have been a different animal? Having lived and grown up around Marietta, Ohio, Zoni Oshilis was used to seeing different types of spiders, though nothing would prepare her for what she saw in the summer of 2004. Apparently that year a new type of spider would appear around her home. She saw hundreds of them, white with brownish spots, about the size of a man's hand. These spiders were larger than average, entirely white, and seemed to possess more shrimp-like legs and motions. The second set of legs were nearly three times the length of all other legs and seemed to have multiple functions, and these spiders moved sideways and were exceedingly fast. What type of spider they were, she had no idea. In October 2002, Megan Edwards was hiking on the Ched Oak Trail in Hamilton Wentworth in Ontario with her dogs when she caught sight of a medium-sized weasel-like animal crossing under a bush. It was pure black, bigger than a mink, but smaller than an otter with a long, ferret-like tail. Definitely not a squirrel or a cat. It had a body like an otter and a face like a fox with otter-like ears. What could it be? Megan returned to the location numerous times but never saw it again, nor did she find any signs of it having been there, i.e. footprints, etc. In the first week of June 2000, Ron Dew and his wife had decided to travel to Lake Gogebeck in Michigan to fish for walleyes. A friend of theirs who was disabled agreed to join them. Ron drove from southern Michigan straight through to Marquette, and then he and his wife swapped seats, and she agreed to drive the remainder of the way. Ron was quite tired by that point. It was around 2 a.m., and his wife had slowed down to about 40 miles per hour due to seeing so many deer. When they were about 30 to 40 miles outside of Marquette, something crossed the road in front of their car about 100 meters down the road, an animal that none of them could identify. As we approached it, it stopped on the right side of the road and turned to look at us, either in surprise or to study us. We slowed to a stop about 15 to 20 meters from it. With the high beams on, it was very clear. The animal was about four to four and a half feet tall and traveled on all fours. It had long silver gray hair with contrasting black, dark brown streaks. Its back was angled at about 45 degrees, having the posture of a gorilla or a hyena. The front legs were very long, disproportionately longer than the rear legs, which were short and squatty. What really amazed and scared us was the head and face. Its ears were flat to the sides of the head, and the face was very round and flat, almost humanoid. It had no protruding snout like a dog, and large black eyes. The neck was very thick, almost as if the head merged directly into the upper torso. The creature then bolted past their car at an angle. Ron watched out the passenger side window. He was the closest to it. He could see that it was about three-fourths the size of a person. 
His wife immediately turned the car around and they watched as it went up a steep hill, taking large smooth strides, jumping, they estimated, six to eight feet with each bound. Unfortunately, my camera was packed away in the trunk. My friend and I have hunted and fished in Michigan all our lives. He is a biology major and we have never encountered anything like this before. In the summer of 1999, Jake Ido had been visiting his grandparents' home in Roseburg, Oregon. He recalled that one hot overcast day, he had gone outside and stood in their yard, which faced the street. That is when he spotted a rather strange-looking animal, which he described as dingy white. It seemed to half-hop, half-gallop down the side of the street in the direction of a neighbor's house, which was across from where Jake was standing. It paused no more than 30 feet away and raised its head to look at me. It had a strangely elongated neck which supported a small, cat-like head. The neck was covered in tangled fur dappled with light brown spots. The rest of the fur looked fairly smooth. The eyes were pure black and oval-shaped. It had weird leaf-like rabbit ears and a bulky rabbit body. However, it was much larger than any rabbit I'd ever even heard of. It was almost dog-like in size. It also had a thick triangular tail which it held erect when it moved. It stood staring at me for almost 20 seconds. I then moved closer and it began to hop away in the direction it was going. It had a clumsy, almost wounded looking gait. Suddenly a neighbor slammed his car door shut which seemed to startle the creature, causing it to bolt into a thick cluster of trees in another yard. Some of my patrons might remember the story. I actually covered it a couple years ago, so if it sounds familiar, you'll know why. Residents in Old Lyme, Connecticut for about two months in 1986 claimed that a strange animal described as half dog, half rabbit was prowling around their area woods. September 4, 1986, the East Hartford Gazette newspaper published an article detailing the various sightings of this odd creature, which, to date, nobody seems to have been able to capture or identify. Reporter Linda Tamaro managed to track down several witnesses including one John Hubbard. Hubbard was the first person to spot and report the animal. According to him, it was mid-July 1986. John, behind the wheel, and his wife Patricia in the passenger seat we're driving on Route 156 when John spotted something run across the road. Patricia also saw it, but not until it was near finished crossing. Neither could quite understand what they had just witnessed. Curiously, ten days later, Hubbard saw the animal again. This time it was sniffing the grass near Mill Pond Road. When John tried to get closer, the creature quickly rushed away into the surrounding woods. Tamara asked Hubbard if he thought the creature might have been eating the foliage to which he admitted he wasn't sure. Hubbard described the animal as having the body of a dog and the head of a rabbit, including long floppy ears. It was as big as a medium-sized dog standing more than 18 inches and it hopped on its hind legs. Also, it was thin, like a greyhound with short grey hair and a long thin tail. Its front paws moved forward in a pacing fashion as it jumped. It was a funny looking sight, John told Tomorrow, adding, it might have been a mixture of a dog and a rabbit. Another old Lyme resident, Peggy Atwood, also spotted the strange rabbit dog in the woods on Mill Pond Lane just a few weeks before Hubbard in June. It was also seen by Peggy's husband, who was with her at the time. Peggy admitted to Tomorrow that when she initially saw it, she thought it was a fox, but when it started hopping across the road, she realized that there was no such thing as a hopping fox and it wasn't large enough to be a kangaroo. I have no idea what it was, she confessed to Tomorrow. Officials of the State Department of Environmental Protection, or the DEP, disagreed that the animal being seen around Old Lyme was a half-rabbit, half-dog type hybrid. Paul Rigo, a wildlife biologist for the DEP, told Tomorrow that it simply wasn't possible that a dog and a rabbit could mate. While some town officials laughed off the whole affair, members of the DEP actually did make an effort to identify the mystery animal. Rigo acknowledged that there was no native animals in Connecticut that fit the rabbit dog's description, though he was aware of a few European hares, 
scattered throughout the state, which were larger than the American cottontail rabbit. Sometimes these hairs, he told Tamaro, could grow as large as a medium-sized dog, weighing up to 10 pounds. Still, that didn't explain everything, as Rigo admitted that European hares typically didn't have long, thin tails. Rigo acknowledged that if the calls continued to come in, then the DEP might send an official to Old Lyme in hopes of tracking down the animal, but until then he was left to assume that the locals were simply misidentifying a known animal. Maybe it was just somebody's ugly dog, he told Tamaro. 